I kind of look back on college sometimes and I'm like, man, why, why didn't I pivot sooner? That encouraged me to keep going, first of all, to keep doing weird movements, jumping, climbing, flipping. Literally the two craziest <laughs> yeah. years in human history, right? What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first podcast of Hanging at Harry's. That is a working title. What do you think about that title? I think it's definitely a good start. I mean, it keeps the <laughs> keeps the homey vibe. And it's, it's got yeah. the title of the channel in there, so yeah. it's good promo, For sure. you know? <laughs> so this is Levi Porter. He is a friend of mine that I met in college. We're going to talk a little bit about college. I want to talk a little bit about your story leading up to college as well, because okay. personally, I don't know too much about your bat story growing up, things like that. Um, yeah. But I also want to catch us up to date with how you're doing now. Okay. We literally just talked before we started rolling about you shooting video in New York for <laughs> the X Games, Winter uh, X Games. Uh, or World University Games. Yep. My mistake. <laughs> yeah, good. Yep. But still, super cool. Like you're, mm -hmm. you're working on really cool projects right now. And yeah, I just want to talk about First off, how are you? That's my first question. I'm well. Um, maybe better than ever. Uh, better than ever? Wow. Well, I don't know about That's that. That's a bold that, statement. It is a bold <laughs> statement to make. Um, I'm certainly well. Um, reintegrating back into Louisiana life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I can't say too much more without being very specific, I guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mysterious <laughs> Levi over yeah. here, as always. Um, <laughs> Dude, so I want to I want to talk a little bit about how you got into video. Okay. Because I think for myself, other friends of ours that we know, you are like the video guy. You are the <laughs> film guy, you know. Um, but what? How did you get to that place? Like, tell me a little bit about you growing up and how you really got into video. Okay. Cool. So it, fortunately, for storytelling purposes, it's pretty all-encompassing of my life I guess um I guess I'll start from the beginning <laughs> <laughs> that's a good place to start uh, yeah yeah so <laughs> or you know at some uh, some good stories they start at the end right foreshadowing yeah. and then they flash back <laughs> so you could do that if you want but unfortunately I haven't reached the closing point we, <laughs> <laughs> we don't know yeah. how your story ends yeah. quite yet that, that's quite a good yet, thing that is a good thing <laughs> so uh I was born to <laughs> my mom and my dad my dad was a methodist pastor so that means every few years we'd move to a new town in louisiana for him to preach at a different church and uh so that meant i was i don't know kind of kind of seeing the entire state um at the time it was annoying <laughs> and now i'm thankful for it i don't know yeah um so your dad was a pastor yes Funny enough, my mom was a pastor when I was a kid. Yeah. She was the kids minister. PK. Um, PK yeah, <laughs> yeah, so two PKs. That's yeah. that's really unique. I didn't know that about you. Yeah. Um, yep. And he's still out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he had he had a computer and he had some video games for it. And the one that is important to the story is a game called Prince of Persia. <laughs> it came okay. out in 1989. Yeah. It's just a 2D side scroller. And... Uh, Basically, you jump over pits of spikes, climbing up to the top of the palace to save the princess. And so I would always jump over rugs, like pretending there was a pit of spikes underneath them. So I was always jumping, in addition to the normal climbing that kids just do. Um, I don't know, kids just climb on stuff yeah. <laughs> and play around outside. And uh, I don't know, I kept doing that and was like learning flips and stuff as I was growing up and I think it was like sixth or seventh grade I saw some videos on YouTube and it said parkour in the title and I was like okay so the things that I'm doing right now kind of has a name yeah <laughs> it's like so, it's not just so you. yeah it's not it just, just me other there's people other people yeah, yeah exactly there's other people that enjoy doing this so okay maybe I'll start doing this under the name and uh so that was really the beginning um parkour was really the beginning because uh that encouraged me to keep going first of all to keep doing weird movements jumping climbing flipping and around 2010 i think was when i found the parkour group storer they have about eight million subscribers on youtube now oh, wow. they're like the i don't know public facing face of parkour yeah too i, I don't know um tons of viral videos lately 
but around 2010, they were making very cinematic <laughs> YouTube videos. Yeah. Uh, this was around the same time as the DSLR boom, so they got uh, Canon T3Is and stuff, so you could get really shallow depth of field, make things look really pretty. It was, uh, that was whenever uh, I was, I guess, most influenced to try and get a camera myself. I started by taking sunrise pictures on my phone. <laughs> of course. Like I would wake Everyone, up early. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. so like, wow, this is fun. And uh, I guess to take it to the next level, I tried to get a DSLR <laughs> myself and make parkour videos. So yeah. to make parkour videos, you have to have parkour friends, which I didn't have very many of. So I just made videos with my friends for the most part. <laughs> yeah. Occasionally with parkour elements. But yeah, so parkour got me into learning how to use a camera. I got a camera, learned how to take photos so that I could take videos. And when I got to college, um, I was lucky enough to have a scholarship that offered me an on-campus job. And very fortunately enough, it sent me to the College of the Arts. So I met with the Dean at the College of the Arts and he was like, what can you do for us? And I'm like, well, I know how to make videos. <laughs> and he was like, okay, you're gonna make promos for us. Nice. And so in college, that was my, all four years, I made promos for the College of the Arts, which yeah, led me at in UL, several directions. Right. Yes. Okay. Nice. Sorry, I skipped that detail. Yeah. So me and yeah. Levi met at University of Louisiana at Lafayette, mm -hmm. Raging Cajuns. Were you, did you start in 2015? Yep. 2015. Okay. Yep. I started in 2015, graduated 2019. Mm -hmm. Same as you. Same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I was mass comm. So my yeah. focus was broadcasting. That was my concentration. And I did have a minor in cinema studies, which I do like to flaunt every now and then, <laughs> but it doesn't, you know, I don't know to, in the grand scheme of things, I guess it doesn't mean a whole lot, but I knew that there was something that I was really passionate about in that, even though it was just my minor, mm -hmm. um, you, however, were in a different major. You were in MIA, which Correct. is missing in action. Correct. I'm kidding. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Moving Image Arts yes. is an actual degree. It is at UL. <laughs> um, what was your experience like with that degree? Because and and like, did you were you learning things? Do you feel like you were learning outside of school? What was that like? Yeah. So I guess just to make the separation that job that I had at the College of the Arts was completely separate from Moving Image Arts. Okay. College of the Arts is the fine arts college, encompasses like visual arts, music, and performing arts. But Moving Image Arts was in the liberal arts college, so it was much more, I guess, based in the history of cinema and like screenwriting, directing, stuff like that, more so than the actual visual language. I'd say, for the most part. Um, moving Image Arts is kind of like, I still I don't know what it is now. I don't know how <laughs> it looks now at UL, but yeah. at the time it was a hodgepodge of several different majors, essentially. Like, so there it, was were, a, it was a hot <laughs> mess, is that it, what you're Essentially, saying? yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there were mass comm classes, there were like communications classes, there were actual visual arts classes, like I took photography, um, which is a fine art and there were liberal arts classes like English and screenwriting fit into the liberal arts college. Um, there were history classes that I took. I think I took some 80s movies class. Um, but yeah, uh, there were only a couple of actual moving image arts, like MIA prefixed class names, um, MIA 101. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, there was how, to, how to go <laughs> MIA. <laughs> Honestly, MIA 101, say what you will about the professor and I won't name names, but I, I think I learned the most in that class. Really? Um, yeah. Uh, That's awesome. It was very annoying and a lot I hated of, it. A lot of time, freshman but... <laughs> classes are like a joke, you know? Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. stuff that you've probably learned in high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, that's that's good that you got like yeah. a solid footing freshman year. I mean, I, I would put it as an early sophomore class, maybe late freshman class, because you would have to do all of your general ed classes first, yeah. or most of them. I got done with enough of them in high school with uh, dual enrollment. Nice. But um, you so I, smart. Eh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I could have gone to a school that didn't offer them. And <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, 
but MIA 101 taught me so much about the theory of filmmaking, like uh, reasons to do things. Even when you don't think that there are reasons to do things, you can always have reasons to do things with, I don't know, have it be lighting, uh, mise-en-scene, like props. Um, everything is a choice whenever you have the choice to take a picture of it or put it on screen. Like everything in your frame is a choice and how those frames are assembled as a choice. Um, at the time, I was resistant to that mostly because I I just liked using a camera. I liked right. making the best pictures. Point shoot. Yeah, exactly. Very simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, not, not realizing that there are layers to it and there is yeah. a complexity to it. I think mm -hmm. that was kind of my you know, introduction to video world was like coming out of high school, I kind of didn't really know what I wanted to do. And so I saw on like a brochure, like, mass com mm -hmm. ul and i was like i guess that's what i want to <laughs> do so i went for it and i was learning things about writing and being a re being a reporter was essentially what the major was training you to do mm -hmm. and i didn't really want to be a reporter i i liked the video side i liked being on camera but i also mm -hmm. liked being behind the camera and so like you're talking about learning the complexities of you know, it's not just point and shoot. Yeah. There actually is a thought process as to how you are on camera, how you are behind the camera. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to talk a little bit about like how much value did you get out of going to school for that specific thing? Because mm -hmm. I feel like in the video world, you learn so much just by being on the job. Yes. Like experience is everything, right? And mm -hmm. I think that applies across a lot of industries, a lot of fields, but with video in particular, just how much did you really get that much value out of school? Like, do you think yeah. it was worth it? So it can only be colored by that. I had a scholarship for, I guess like half of the expenses, which helps make it <laughs> more worth it. Yeah. But also beyond that, what I always tell anybody who asks me this question, especially somebody who's coming up in the film industry is, if you plan, if like the end of your road is to be a director or a writer or a director of photography like me, um, I think it is good for you to do at least a little bit of film school um, because the value that I got was, the th it was the film theory, um, but it was also learning how to learn, learning how to study a film and take what you see from the film, see what you like about it, and see how you can implement that into your own movies. Um, there is so much that you can learn on set. Um, you can learn everything you need to on set to fit on set. Um, but I think if you're heading into one of the lead creative positions, it is, it's gonna put you a little bit ahead earlier on. <laughs> um, but if you plan to be just like a technician, like if you're gonna be a career assistant camera, or if you're gonna be a career art, director or are you going to be i don't know anything kind of below middle of the line then you can just learn everything on set and be set like no big deal learn, uh, on, learn on set yeah. be set yes <laughs> exactly <laughs> you should like put that on a t-shirt or something <laughs> learn on set, be set. <laughs> <laughs> no that's that's really interesting yeah. because it's something that i've had to think about like since i graduated uh actually graduated four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, That's insane. To and think about. <laughs> like my degree was in mass comm. I was trained essentially to go into the news industry, mm -hmm. which I did. I worked at a local TV station for KTC two years. KTC yeah. TV three. <laughs> yep, there you um, go. Worked with, you know, Rob Perillo, Jim Hummel, Marcel Fontenot, like really awesome people. Mm -hmm. it, but in that industry, in the two years that I was there, I learned very quickly that that really wasn't for me long term. Mm -hmm. um, there's just something about the news industry, the pacing of it, and kind of it's kind of depressing, honestly. Like it kind mm -hmm. of changed. I'm not gonna say it changed who I am, but I think it may maybe change the way that I see things because I'm a pretty optimistic person mm -hmm. in life. And when you work at a TV station for two years, and the two years that I worked there, get this. 2019 to 2021 
the worst one. Literally the two craziest <laughs> yeah. years in human history, wow. right? Yeah. That that will change you. That will change your mentality of how you see things, how you see people, business, marketing, whatever, you know, all, all those things that kind of encompass what we do. Um, and so I look back on those college years and I'm kind of like, I don't know. I think I have a little bit of regret. There's a little <laughs> bit of like, man, why did I spend so much money yeah. doing this to now end up being a freelancer, being a videographer? That's that's kind of my bread and butter right now. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I just I kind of look back on college sometimes and I'm like, man, why why didn't I pivot sooner yeah. or yeah. you know things like that? So that's interesting to hear that that you really saw the value of getting that education, you know. At least for my position. Yeah. And I mean, I could easily see a life because I did work as an assistant camera for a couple of years once I moved to New Orleans. I, I could see a life where if that was my career, then then film school would have had no value to me. But since I'm taking it to the next level, since I'm making all encompassing creative decisions about lighting and framing and stuff that I have to study from other films and study from, I don't know, reading books, reading old interviews, stuff like that. Um, it, it was the learning of how to learn or the learning of how to have the work ethic to learn. Yeah. Uh, and I, I definitely I agree. I, value in, I definitely but, agree with that. Yeah. Like <clears throat> I, I have been spending so much time recently <laughs> studying YouTube yeah. because I'm really trying to put in investment, put in the work mm -hmm. and, I find myself almost on a daily basis looking up new to new tutorials, new tips, yeah. like getting new tricks, stuff mm -hmm. like that. And so, yeah, I totally agree in like the value of learning. Um, I also, I also think that you should evaluate the value of what you're learning. Mm -hmm. it, it, I don't know if that makes sense, but like, yeah. you know, going to college, that's a lot of money. Yes. There's a lot of money to, mm -hmm. inv to invest in a lot of, a lot of things nowadays you can learn online almost for free, you yes. know? Yes. So I think it's just, it's sort of the, the more <laughs> I talk to people about it, I'm kind of like, just stop. Yes. Think for a sec, <laughs> think of how much you're spending or about to spend yes. and, and make an educated decision mm -hmm. based on that. But, yeah. um, I, I kind of want to segue to talking a little bit more about film sure. literally okay because you cellular you, yes, <laughs> the object you yeah. are a film fanatic yeah i follow you on instagram and you are always like developing your own stuff either mm -hmm. you're developing your own stuff you're sending it off to be developed mm -hmm. photos video you are a you're a film nerd okay I'm a nerd. Yeah, what absolutely <laughs> what about that process do you enjoy so much because um, it's a lot of work i would love to try and put it into words, but <laughs> we're going to see. Um, what I really love about analog film, I don't know, it's just fun. It is uh, it is a different workflow, totally. Um, a lot of this will sound derivative. It's like you're, you're taking a photo and you're not knowing what it's going to be until it's developed. It's true. Um, uh, and the same for motion picture. Um, it absolutely changes the way that you work on a set. Um, it's a lot of trust, which is something that can make a set work really well. It's like if you can manage to muster that trust between director, DP, and the rest of the crew, then it can be really smoothly running on set. And that is important, uh, having that smooth set environment. But, I mean, besides that, I mean, the easiest thing for me to say is that film is fun. It's, film it's is some fun. sort of magic. I like it. It's some sort of magic. It's, yeah. It is literally light hitting a thing, and the thing is being affected by that light directly, and it's going to be there forever, like on a physical thing, um, I physical think th manifestation. There's a lot of people <laughs> that don't understand that process. And yeah. like even to me, there's so much science that's yeah, happening that it's it's actually really complicated. Yeah, the, it's really science, <laughs> but it's magic. <laughs> it's science and magic. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's wild. Like, yeah. And that was invented what? A hundred years ago, a little over a hundred years ago. No, and more like maybe little, 150. 150, <laughs> crazy, yeah. yeah. And and just to see the evolution of it over time to where now it's it's digital. Yeah. Right? It's so easy, it's so accessible to people. Yeah. Um, but in the beginning and still, like what you're mm -hmm. doing with personal projects and things that you do for work, 
it's actually really complicated and it's very <laughs> scientific, yes. but, but it has to be so precise though, because if it's not precise, it's what it's overexposed. Yes. It's too grainy. It's yeah. all these really sciencey mm -hmm. terms, yeah. you know, <laughs> but it's not going to look the way you want yeah. it to. Right. Yeah. Correct. Um, and, uh, I love digital and it has taught me everything. Um, that's what I really like about right now is you can get a digital camera for so cheap and that looks so good, but that's going to be what teaches you everything. Um, for me, just cause I enjoy using film, having made my mistakes with digital, it makes it that much easier to be more precise with film. Um, just being able to see my results instantly on digital, kind of informs me with like, okay, if I learn how this film works in relation to digital, then I can pretty much tell what it's going to look like yeah. after it's so processed. Digital um, is almost the guinea pig. Yeah. And film is the, the real deal. At least for me. And I yeah. think at least I for like a lot that. of people coming up, um, digital is a very good tool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and do you still develop your own stuff or do you send a lot of stuff out of house? More and more I'm sending stuff out. Uh, just because I have less and less time to dedicate to the creative process, I guess. Um, or just the process. I wish I had more time. Uh, I guess the plan is to just get myself into a comfortable place financially where I can just have the time to take things from start to finish. But to some degree, with motion picture at least, I, I can't process that all at home and expect to have the great results that a lab would give me yeah um with stills it's fine um and it is fun to have that much control it's way cheaper too but yeah i think more and more shipping more stuff off as i get uh, jobs that can pay for it so so i want to talk a little bit about the oscars because oh that's coming up soon that's, that's a okay. thing yep <laughs> are, are, do you even care about the oscars should we not talk about this i mean i care I'm just not educated. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's nominated. I haven't seen most of the nominations. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for some people to win things. Who, <laughs> who are you excited to see win? I, I would. I, I mean, I'm excited in general for people to win things. Okay. Like, I'm okay. excited about the idea. Of gotcha. An so there's ceremony. no one that you've um, like secretly funded under the table for no, them to win. You're not. Um, you're not secretly a part of the academy, are you? Uh, that is, that is, uh, classified. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Is someone going to come find me later? Yeah. I hope not. Okay. Well, that's, you know, we don't have to talk about okay. it if you don't want. I mean, but I will say if you have any general questions, that so. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually probably going to watch it this year. Yeah. I, I don't think I've watched it in pro. Well, everybody watched it last year, right? Oh, Will yeah. Smith. Yeah. I can't believe that was a year ago. <laughs> or I think but, yeah. actually nobody watched it. And but then, they watch the clip. Yes. You know, that's that's what happened. Because their their ratings have actually gone down year over year for like the past decade. Yeah. And it's really interesting because I remember as a kid, I watched it with my mom. Like mm -hmm. we would watch the red carpet before the show. We would watch the entire thing together. And then it was just like a really fun thing for us to like bond over. Because mm -hmm. we both love movies a lot. And it was just fun to see the celebrities, all of the, you know, dapper suits, yeah. the, the fun dresses, stuff like that. And, but, but now that I'm older, it's like, I just don't care. <laughs> I, I haven't cared or I haven't had a reason to care mm -hmm. in, in a long time. I think the only reason I'm going to watch it this year is because I'm like really into the industry and trying to like have a pulse on the industry because mm -hmm. This is something that I'm really passionate about. Yeah. And so I want to double down on that. And the Oscars, you know, it's just an interesting thing because it used to be a big deal to a lot of people and now it's not. Yeah. Um, so what, I don't, I, I don't know if you have anything to comment on that, but. I don't know if it's like the progression of our age now or just like the progression of society as a whole. Um, I don't know. You could you could attribute some of it to um, the shortening of attention spans via social media and short form content, um, or just the accessibility to any online content is. It's like it's less of an event, less of a thing you got to sit down and watch on TV. More of a thing you can just watch the highlights from the day after. I mean, 
my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it also, do you think that like celebrity star power has gone down in a sense? Because people used to tune in to mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And I, maybe I'm just thinking pre-internet, you know, like when I was a kid, early 2000s, the internet, it was around, but it wasn't, I mean, you didn't have social media, you didn't have yeah. people dialoguing on the internet, things like that. It was like you tuned in to your TV yeah. and that was how you connected and bonded with other people who also liked it. Mm -hmm. But now it's, I don't know, is, is it, is it the fact that we care less about celebrities? Has it gotten too political? <laughs> like, I don't know. It seems like there's just this ball of something hovering over it to where people don't really care to watch it anymore. I mean, maybe you might have a point. Um, people can get their celebrity fix just by going onto Instagram. Um, whereas I don't know, in the eighties or nineties, you're not gonna, <laughs> you're not gonna see Cardi B talking to Instagram or I don't know, any given celebrity like is not instantly talking to you. <laughs> so I'm going to read you um, the, the 10 best picture nominees. Great. Let's see how many you've watched. Great. And then give me your prediction <laughs> gonna of be who bad. will win. First off, Top Gun Maverick. Okay. You had to have seen I that one. I did see that one. Okay. Yeah. Everyone and their grandma yes. saw it last year. Uh, women Talking. Every Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Yes. That one is actually really good. Yes. Banshee's Vina Sharon. Haven't seen it. Secretly Amazing. It was not on my radar whatsoever. Loved it. Uh, Triangle of Sadness. You saw it? No. I have not seen it. <laughs> uh the fablemans nope that's spielberg right? that's, spielberg, that's spielberg for sure yeah. uh all quiet on the western front saw that one it will uh <laughs> this is getting bad <laughs> it's really dark but also oh. good at the same time uh avatar the way of water I haven't seen it yet. almost everyone has seen <laughs> yeah. that one at this point yeah. uh elvis yeah I did and elvis. tar i didn't see a tar i've seen three <laughs> you've seen three, three okay three out of ten that's yeah. pretty bad yeah it's pretty bad but <laughs> It, no, it's really not that bad. It's like, I've seen, I think seven, yeah. seven out of these, mm -hmm. which, so that's part of the reason why I'm tuning in this year is because mm -hmm. I accidentally watched most of the movies that are nominated, uh, which doesn't normally happen, mm -hmm. but it's funny watching movies like Elvis, Top Gun Maverick, ones that came out kind of early, uh, 2022. Yeah. And I was like, man, this was really good it has the potential to win some awards. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just kind of funny that like retrospect of, of looking back on, on those things, but yeah. any, any <laughs> Levi Porter secret predictions here? Any, I can, uh, I can only say things about the three I've seen. <laughs> okay. So of the three um, that you saw, you saw Top Gun, Top Gun, Elvis, everywhere and, all at once and Elvis. Yeah. Yeah. So of those three, um, who wins? For me, if those are the only three movies nominated, <laughs> which which takes the cake. For me, it's everything, everywhere, all at once. I think I'd probably agree I with think kind of yeah. easily. Um, Top Gun is an excellently made film and an excellent film, very fun to watch. Yeah. Um, but I think the Academy would not give it the win. <laughs> I I would agree with you. The Academy can be finicky. Yeah. And. Uh, Elvis was very good, but it lost me at some moments. Sure. Um, Honestly, the first yeah. hour and a half of Elvis, like, I was on board. Yeah. I was like, man, this is something different. This is unique mm -hmm. and just wild. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually really loved Elvis. It was kind of like my favorite surprise of 2022. And then I saw Banshees of Venice Share, and, and I was like, this is total opposite of Elvis in every way possible, but just as amazing. Um, I see it. <laughs> but no, I think I agree with you out of those three. I'd probably take E E A O. That's yeah. the <laughs> initials. Yeah. Uh, that movie was like out of left field Yeah. and, and very surprising. Out of left field. <laughs> yes. And I think it's kind of stayed in my brain somehow, just mm -hmm. how creative, how unique it is. Um, yeah. so yeah, I'm probably in agreement with you. Yeah. I think it hits so many genres and so many different human emotions in a perfect way <laughs> yeah yeah in the best way yeah. and also way. um what's his name the guy uh, uh guy who was a child oh ki hai kwan yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well i guess we were all children at one point but well, yeah, anyway <laughs>
All right. I think that's going to do it, man. Thanks okay. for being okay. here. Thanks for talking. You're like one of my favorite filmmakers to just watch <laughs> what you do, you know? You. Um, you're super talented. You're really awesome at what you do, telling good stories. Okay, I did see one of your videos recently on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> it was literally a mini documentary yeah. about parkour. Yeah. You followed yeah. a guy who like climbed down five stories, mm -hmm. but on the exterior of the building. Yeah. I, I'm probably gonna put the video over the screen right now <laughs> okay. if I can do that. But sure. it's insane and everyone needs to go watch it because it's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you literally did like a mini documentary in about three minutes yeah. and it's just incredible. Like the stuff that you do is awesome and I just love following your stuff. Thanks. <laughs> All right, you get the last um, word. Anything you wanna anything you wanna say or add? I don't know. Um only specifics only specifics <laughs> hard to be general um yeah this is a lot of fun thanks for having me on uh i've always wanted to do this i'm glad i got to do it with you and uh yeah um don't look at my channel because i haven't <laughs> uploaded haven't uploaded in six months you have a youtube channel <laughs> i do nice nice um I, the idea for it i think it was always to be um filmy stuff film nerdy stuff how to do film stuff yeah. i'm like in the thick of producing tutorials for how to process film but processed on like shot on film and processed okay in my closet nice <laughs> um but yeah that's cool hey we'll, we'll, we'll definitely there. link it we'll yeah. link it in the description for sure yeah. people can go find you but don't don't watch it yet <laughs> don't watch it yet <laughs> yeah. got it yeah. all right man thanks for hanging at harry's cool thanks for having me at harry's <laughs>